is your question. It's trying something. Right, so if you have read and understood considering eight critical care scenario, please tell me how would you manage this patient? No. Okay, ma'am. So I will manage the patient according to the CCLISP protocol. So yes. we have to talk to the patient if he able to talk, and then we have to go for breathing. How is the pattern of the breathing? How is the breathing rate? Any yes. asymmetry is there or not? Then we have to go for circulation, as the patient is already very hypotensive. So yes. we have to open two white bore cannula. We start yes. uh, fluid uh, one liter. Like a steroid uh, running as fast as possible, yes. and then we have to send the blood for cross mass and prepare at least six units of blood uh, for transfusion. Yes, and and then we have to check the vitals. Uh, yes, intravenous uh, energy. Yes, yeah, we can we can do even central venous pressure monitoring, and we can uh, check urine output, capillary refill. What investigations would you send? To so here we can start with yes. we can start with um, ultrasound abdomen and uh, CT angiogram as we suspected it and could be a ruptured aortic aneurysm. Yes. So CT angio uh, will be best option. Okay. Uh, any other? All right. Uh, what complications do you expect? In this okay, patient. so patient has this severe uh, hemorrhagic shock. Uh, patient might and develop... Uh, considering a pulsatile structure in the mm -hmm. left flank, what complications yeah. do you expect to see or That's to right. find? Okay, ma'am. So it could be a, like ruptured uh, aortic aneurysm. So uh, maybe it can be ruptured and then... And Cardiac, cardiac arrest, uh, hyporenal perfusion can cause uh, renal failure as well, acute renal failure. Okay, there could be rupture, there could be thrombosis, there could be yeah. even embolism, there could be fistulation embolism. to the yes, bowel or to the vena cava or any to the renal veins or there could even be a pressure effects, ultimately yes, death. All right, ultimately can you, death, uh, yes. right, if you can tell me when would you decide that patient should be operated? Okay, so if, uh, of course, this is a, a very urgent uh, patient as is already very hypotensive, 70 over 40. So even the patient is not ready to go for CT scan, but if we can do a urgent CT angiogram, yeah. and if our vascular surgeon is ready, then the patient might go for Consider, operation. please consider the age of the patient as well. Patient is elderly, yeah, that one. fragile as well. So, yeah, so in that case, I will, I will go for a conservative treatment. And all right. It looks like it's already a palliative care. So, yes. So, what is the surgical management that can be offered, not just to this patient, but in general? Okay, in general, for uh, ruptured uh, or maybe aortic aneurysm. Uh, the management is supposed to be surgical. We can uh, do endovascular repair or maybe open repair. Okay. So we have to confirm the diagnosis first. Is it ruptured or is it uh, secular uh, aneurysm or is it thrombus? Then we have to decide about the operation according to the diagnosis. So according to the location of the aneurysm. And location of the aneurysm, yes. Other, not just considering this patient in general. Okay, yeah. right. Can you please tell me uh, what are the most immediate post-operative complications that you expect 
if you decide to go via the open surgery, open repair. Okay, so maybe uh, a renal failure, acute, and maybe. First, come with the graph. You you're going to repair it, right? How are you okay. going to? Yes, first is that. Okay, graph rejection or mal positioning or then okay. What else? Uh, maybe. Uh, then or, kidney, uh, okay. Yes, kidney failure or cardiac arrest uh, yes. could be uh, ruptured again. The graph from the I mean, what we called maybe anastomotic uh, displacement. Okay, just pause its uh, dissection. How would you or what measures would you take or why you cannot stop bleeding? Because it's a very high flow and high pressure. Yes. So you cannot stop the bleeding yes. from, from the dissection there. Okay. Are, are there anything that you can give to the patient to maintain the hemostasis? We can, I can give uh, tranexamic acid, but it will not help. Yes. We can put pressure, we can maybe put a stent, but it's not a definitive treatment. Yes. Okay, can you tell me? You've already told me about the complication. Just suppose this patient was a normal uh, outdoor patient who has visited you in outdoor. What would you advise about the surveillance or the observance of the abdominal aortic dissection? For how long would you have observed the patient and how frequently? So we have to, okay, so I have to observe the patient lifelong. And yes. maybe every six months we can do CT angiogram to rule out is there any other aneurysm. And the uh, length of the length and uh, wide of the abdominal aorta. So, what are the classifications of the abdominal aortic dissection? So abdominal uh, aortic aneurysm. It can be uh, secular. It can be um, infrarenal. It can be suprarenal. Yes, and. What is pseudo-aortic aneurysm? Okay, so pseudo-aortic aneurysm, where is only uh, intimal layer is uh, causing dilatation, not yes. uh, all three layers. Okay. Yeah, so it in, be due to trauma. How the management differs, differs in that situation? So for pseudo-aneurysm, uh, I can... Consider uh, endo, endovascular repair. What are the risk factors uh, for the aortic, abdominal aortic aneurysm? Mm, uh, smoking, okay. hypertension, yes, obesity, and, uh, dyslipidemia. Okay. Yes, and? Uh, and some uh, congenital anomalies and acquired as well. Uh, yes. Syphilis, syphilis, mm -hmm. Marfan syndrome. Could a male gender be one of the risk factors? Yeah, male gender. Yes. Okay. The family history. Family history is a uh, yeah, yes. genetic. All right, good. Last few seconds are left. Good. Thank you.